Hey, this is Jody with WeldingTipsAndTricks.com, and here's another weekly video. This week we're welding some 2-inch sanitary tubing. We're going to talk about purging and fit-up and welding techniques and whatnot. It is usually welded, most often welded, without filler metal. One reason is because with filler metal you can introduce oxidation that will float to the inside of the root, cause a place where bacteria can, can grow and whatnot. So one way is rolling the pipe in a bench sometimes welding small fittings to pipes and things uh, just roll it on, on a bench another way is walking the cup like this which works great except when there's stuff in the way but it also kind of makes it wider than you need it sometimes but again it, it's it is one way and it, it works great makes a nice uniform looking weld uh, most often I've seen it freehanded like this so that's what we're gonna do today we're gonna just uh, freehand walk walking that thing up making little tiny circles and so we're gonna fit one up and talk about it in just a minute and we're going to walk through it. So we got it all cleaned up, faced off pretty good. Now on sanitary tubing, fit up is everything, and purge is uh, probably more important than fit up, or at least as equal equally as important. It's great if you can have some kind of little uh, adapter on the end, uh, some kind of little stainless plug or something that you can hook an argon hose up to, and you don't just have to always tape because when you just tape and pl poke a hole in it, and then stick a uh, argon hose in there you can get leaks so you're, you're less likely to have leaks if you got something a little more substantial like this or a you know maybe a part of a big clear lens or a piece of uh, Lexan with a threaded uh, barbed fitting in it or any number of things uh, save a little time save a little tape but tape works too I'm using just blue painters tape here it works pretty good if you don't get it too hot and it's going to be quite a ways from the heat so that's what I'm using today but I want to get it all all taped up. Don't want any leaks because any leaks are going to draw air in there and it's going to screw up the purge. And I need a good 100% pure argon purge to make the root pass come out nice and silver. So I'm going to stick the argon hose on here. This is a kind of a uh, like what comes on a TIG torch. You can use a lot of different kinds of clear hose. Uh, you can use uh, even vacuum hose, but some rubber hoses like vacuum hose can actually hold uh, oxygen in the pores of the hose so it's, it's better to use something that's uh doesn't have huge pores on it now i'm taping the other end of this and then i'm going to put a little slit in it here and the reason i'm putting a slit instead of just poking holes is that while it's uh not welded up i want it to kind of stay like it is and when when pressure builds up in there if you put a, a crisscross in here it will allow argon to escape as pressure builds up and it'll keep argon in there better when when you don't have uh, build up a pressure when the joints not welded yet and, and argon can escape on the joint so it's just a little trick I'll also put another hole in there in a minute I'm gonna run it up to you know between 10 and 15 CFH here on the argon I'm using a dual flow meter there and also for tacking right here I'm gonna, I want to put a, a, a little tiny hole at the very very top Argon's heavier than air, so you have to think of it like water. You have to think of it like what would happen if I was filling this container up with water. Could all the water displace all the air in whatever you're trying to purge? And if not, you got to take steps to keep it. you got to position the part or put a vent hole or something else. So that's why I put that little vent hole at the very top so all the argon could displace the air uh, from this thing and I get a good purge. Now the reason I got a good silver tack on that thing even though I'm using a scratch start thing here and I've got I have no way of stopping the arc or or so you would think uh, the reason I'm getting a good a good purge there and I don't have to whip out is because I'm using this little uh, homemade uh, foot switch that I that I showed in a video a few weeks ago. There again it's it's in a 6G position so even though I've got that crisscross punch there cut I put a little a little small pinhole at the very very top to allow the argon to push all the air out of that thing just as if it was water it knew it's got to be up at the very very top to get a to get a good purge now I'm going to use a TIG finger because this thing just begs for a TIG finger it's nice slick stainless polished and that TIG finger is going to slide on it and let me make nice little smooth movements and also I'm going to position my hand wherever I want and not my hand won't get hot I'm using this big old huge old old CK air cooled torch with a uh, with a torch valve on it it's just a, just a dry rig, scratch start. I'm, I'm using a Lincoln Buzz box with a rectifier, a homemade rectifier on it at about 60 amps here. And actually it's a little hot. I'm learning something new here. I'm doing a little split screen picture in picture. I hope to, hope to bring you more of this in future videos. I think it's going to be helpful to see positioning of the hands and positioning of how the foot pedal works on when I am using a foot pedal and stuff. But 
I don't have it perfected yet, so it, this is all you, this is all I'm going to show for this particular video because I kind of ran into a a snag. But I think it's I think it's going to be instructive to do that kind of thing in future videos. So again, I don't have to whip out because all I got to do is stomp on that little foot pedal that I was talking about. I'll show it to you in a minute, and you and I'll. Um, Hopefully in YouTube I can put a, a link to it. You can just, you know, if you if you look up DIY TIG foot switch or whatever, you'll probably find it on Google. But here I'm just again I'm I'm uh, this should be probably at about 45 amps, uh, 45 to 50 amps to to be good. I'm I'm just making tiny little circles and trying to move on and not spend a lot of time that I don't have to spend. And even while I'm filming it with camera in the way and everything, it came out pretty okay. And you see where it's nice and silver where I stopped, which is going to be, be nice when I tie into that. Now, for, for doing the other side, I can swap hands, put the TIG finger on just the same way that I did. But not everybody feels comfortable using their left hand. And on a 6G, the reason I'm doing a 6G anyway is it's a rare joint to do in the field, but it is it is sometimes given to get the job. So I figure maybe this will help somebody get a job somewhere, um, just that they have to take a, a little shakedown 6G test just to get their foot in the door. But on a 6G, you got one side you pretty much got to do left-handed, or you got to figure out a way to position your right hand. So I'm, I'm flopping the TIG finger around where I have more uh, layers of TIG finger to hold it like this, and that seems like it's going to be pretty easy for me to slide along and make the whole run after taking a few dry runs like that it's always good to take a few runs at something before you light up things look different under the helmet so let's see how that one goes now I know this looks like I'm I've got a you know piece of rebar on a five gallon bucket here I've got it blown up big time so uh, you just gotta realize sometimes I magnify things just to help you see what's going on but this is more like you know maybe what you would see underneath the helmet right here again just very tiny circles I'm trying to move as as you know it looks like I'm moving on pretty slow and I am but but this is kind of the how things go sometimes when you're in a little bit of a jam a little bit out of position you can't always you can't always travel as fast as you would like to but you you want to try to not hang around too long on stainless steel you'll you'll cook it it'll turn out all gray and and uh, you know it's bad. Now I'm going to tie in here. I tie it in. Now I'm going to snap, kind of trail out, and then hit that foot pedal, and it should look like that. And you see I, I maintain gas shielding, and that is that is really the benefit of having that little foot switch, is maintaining gas shielding and not having to come back and file and, and uh, grind and brush and polish and everything to get that oxidation off there where you whip out. Now to inspect the root, this is the way I've seen inspectors do it for years. Flashlight, telescope, and mirror look in there. I found something better. I was in the welding supply store the other day and saw these at the counter and I'm like that's the slickest thing I've seen yet. It's got a, a telescoping thing with a gooseneck on it and the mirror is attached to the end of a little LED light like that. So <laughs> and that slick frees up a hand. You know, it just makes things a lot easier to to in inspect something like that, like a inside diameter of a, a tube like this. It's actually marketed for a HVAC inspection tool, but perfect thing for inspecting inside a pipe and, and outside un underneath when you can't uh, can't see the bottom or whatever slickest thing so had to have one thought I would uh, show it in the video and give a little close up here of the, the who makes it and where you could uh, google it or whatever you can you probably go to that website it's called sensible products it's a emf-2 model uh, something I think it's uh, something magnetic, flexible, light. I don't know. This is the unit I welded it with. That buzz box with the uh, with the uh, rectifier with all those diodes in it, and then this little homemade little foot switch where I can. I'll show you in a minute here. I'm welding here. Here I'm welding, and then watch the arc when I break break the arc. See, so that's that's how I maintain the gas shielding on there. Um, came out pretty decent for for a guy who's rusty and is a hack sometimes. <laughs> All right, now it's it's time for me to try to sell you a TIG finger. I'm going to show you lots of other little uh, cases where a TIG finger really comes in handy. 6G on a 2-inch 6G Schedule 80 pipe, that thing will get cooking your fingers unless you hold it way back on the torch. And the farther back on the torch you hold it, the less steady you are. So, might help you pass a test if you're if you're in school doing 6G test. Get a TIG finger. Small by small diameter. Uh, tubes like this. This is kind of like a socket weld. It's actually a specialty wrench that I was fabricating for a, a customer uh, several months ago. Really helps. Aluminum gets hot really quick and sometimes it's hard to find a place to prop. So you can see it slides up an aluminum joint 
And I'm sped this up here to just so you can see it slide up there. Chromoly tubing, not always a good place to prop. It gets pretty hot welding those cluster joints. Comes in really handy for that. A round joint like this, like a socket, a heavy duty socket weld, a heavy wall socket weld or, that are, uh, require multiple passes, gets really hot, gives you more places to prop. And that's all I got for you today. So go over to welding-tv.com. And if you think a TIG finger would help you, if you think it's worth investing a little bit of money to, to get uh, help you weld better and to further you along, then only you can decide if you think that's going to work for you. But I think I've shown you enough examples there anyway to, to make a good decision. And I appreciate you watching. Visit WeldingTipsAndTricks.com and Welding-TV.com.